folks, two weeks ago, we learned that evictions spiked 106% from June to July. Hemlane, as you may recall, has over 24, maybe even 25,000 units on platform. So 106% spike is significant. One of the challenges or requests I had of Dana, the CEO, was to go back and see if we can identify the top five states and see if there's anything we can learn. Great news. She has delivered. Dana, how are you? I am great. Thanks for having me back on to to talk about this hot topic where, you know, when we when we spoke about um, the amount of the number of tenants delinquent, we saw certain trends that made sense, such as um, a spike in January right after the holiday season. But, you know, this spike in, in July is quite unheard of and we didn't see it happen last year. And so excited to to chat with you about it and, and drill down even deeper to see what's going on here. I love it. And uh, I don't want to misstate, how many units on platform in Himlane? Uh, 28,000. 28,000. Yeah, I yes. hate when I undersell. I'm so sorry. You, can get, you are you get totally mad. fine. Get mad at me later. <laughs> All right. So uh, it'd be very curious. What is 20? So again, 28,000 on platform evictions from June, July spiked 106%. Uh, I think you have a couple of cuts of this. Um, and you. It, I think it's important cuts because otherwise, if you just did it on raw numbers, the biggest states would win, which be, could be potentially misleading. Tell us what the team actually did. Yeah. So what we did was, um, you're correct. So if we just said what, which states have the most um, number quantity of um, tenants who are delinquent on rent um, that have to start serving notices, go through the mediation process, you guys can guess what states those would be. They'd be, you know, California, Texas, Florida, I think Washington, New York. Um, and so instead, what we did was we took two different cuts of it. One was based on percentage of units on platform. And so making sure that we normalized it with the percentage of units. And then the second thing we did was just um, look at those who are actively engaged in what we consider rent defense, which is saying we're taking these preactive measures um, to help and assist. And so the reason we do that is to make sure that we have some sort of control over it, because you could have, let me give you an example, Michael, you could be using Hemlane for rent collection and your lease states that rent is due on the first of the month. And that's what the system has, but you've always had some sort of agreement with your tenant that they can be late by two or three days. And so we wanted to take all of that out to say, okay, what states are the impacted the most? Um, and so we have five of those states. Let me I see if I can guess them. I want to play. I want to guess. guess. Yeah. So, um, so I think when in the last session, I thought one of the ones that might surprise people was Louisiana. So I'll start there. Did that make nope. the list? Ah, huh. didn't make the list. All right. So let's think about this. What states at the percent? Um, I don't know. We'll go Nevada. Nope. That's wow. your backyard, but no. I'm I'm in O for two. Um, I'm gonna try one more. If I don't get it, then I give up. North Carolina. No, but you're close. Oh, South Carolina. South Carolina. That was number two. So as a as a percentage of those units that we have, um, the first one is actually Georgia. Oh, damn it. So I talked myself Louis out of Georgia. Louisiana was close, but Georgia is the state where we've seen the most delinquency as a percentage of units. That's interesting. Okay. So Georgia, South Carolina, one, two. Yeah. Where do we go next? Alabama. Oh, so we're in the Southeast. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah, so it's the, the Southeast. Now here's what will throw you a bit of a curveball. Uh -huh. is the next one is in the Northwest or sorry, Northeast, Northeast. Oh, wow. Are we talking like New Hampshire or something? Close Vermont. Oh, Vermont. Wow. Vermont out of nowhere. Okay. Out of nowhere. And then the next one that's a bit out of nowhere, except that it's a high cost of living is Hawaii. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. So that, that would sense. make sense because of the high cost of living and the, I think, income inequality that you yeah. definitely see there. I, 
that and I also see I I also see a lot of travel offers to Hawaii, which tells me maybe there's less tourists, you know, going on. Mm. Maybe her okay. incomes. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So we had Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama, Vermont, Hawaii. Yep. And one thing for us, yeah, one thing for us to track on this is. Um, so obviously we saw, saw over hundred percent increase in these delinquency rates, um, within the system, uh, something that we hadn't seen, you know, um, since, uh, really de December or January, excuse me, was when we saw a slight uptick, but not at a hundred percent plus. And so now I'm very curious when we get to August one, do the states always consist say consistent? That's mm -hmm. like one of my questions is like, is right. it always Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama? And if you have rental properties there, would love your kind of feedback yeah. on it. Yeah, let us know. Uh, if you're in Georgia, Alabama, South Carolina, Vermont, out of nowhere, Vermont. and Hawaii, let us know below what's going on. Exactly. And so that, and then also just confirming that those delinquency rate, rates go down, right? And that tenants are paying online, they're not cost burdened, all of that. So I'm very interested to see August results. It's still too early. We know uh, which tenants are behind on rent. We're seeing through mediation right now um, what can get them caught up and, and we'll have results later on uh, this month. Yeah, it'll be very interesting because, again, it's always possible you have one dirty month out there. It'll be interesting if, if, if evictions go up, if, if evictions go up in August on the July number, that's a problem. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Know, that that That's now a trend. Uh, my hope is it doesn't, obviously. And then you're right. Looking at the five states, was that just a blip or, or something? I'm curious, the two different cuts that your team uh, brought to bear, same exact five states, same exact order? No. So then the other one, um, which was on the number of requests there, um, Georgia was still number one. Um, so this was just based on, um, this one was just based on number of requests total. So not huh. accounting for population. Right. Yep. Um, and that was Georgia was number one. Ohio was number two. Interesting. So Ohio and, oh, out of nowhere. Yeah, and Ohio is a very interesting one from this perspective. Back in, what was it, 2019 or so, there was the opioid epidemic. Mm -hmm. And so we did see a lot more from that perspective um, concerns within Ohio, just based on what was going on there. This is a little bit odd um, that it's still that, you know, um, from that perspective, delinquencies are up so high. Um, and then it's Florida, Illinois, and Texas. So oh, this Florida got on the list. Yeah, Florida got on the list, Illinois, and then Texas. Which oh, is that's interesting because Illinois' deep blue probably has slow evictions, I'm guessing. And then you got Florida uh, and Texas, which fast evictions. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Which to your point, um, with with any of these states where I would say it's faster with evictions, you probably see, this is my hypothesis, fewer evictions or like it not being a recurring problem of tenants right. delinquent on rent because you can just say, hey, listen, you need to abide by the law and here's the legally binding contract. Um, so yeah, that was really interesting. And then California didn't make the list. And- Rabbit Newsom, you're not on the top, buddy. Congratulations. I know. <laughs> I and neither <laughs> neither did Nevada. So those two did not make the oh, list. That's hilarious. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, Rent Defense. Hemlane is the platform for mom and pop investors. Uh, Dion's using you guys for advertising, always talks about it, um, uses it to help uh, get new tenants in. But let's talk about helping, you know, mom and pop landlords through the eviction process. It's it's a very stressful time. Talk about uh, Talk about the services you provide there. Yeah, so I think evictions are very misunderstood. I just I think landlording itself is very misunderstood. Um, and in examples like, oh my gosh, I have to do so much work. I have to do repairs. I have to do when a tenant calls because something like their garage door stopped working, right? Um, and, and it's the same thing on well, what happens when the tenant stops paying rent? And so our team has a process tried, tested and true to basically say, you don't need to get involved when your tenant is late on rent. We will do that for you. And it starts with a mediator. So this is an experienced mediator who is going to call the tenant 
and just say, hey, your rent was due on the first. It's the third of the month. I just wanted to check in with you and see if you had any questions, see, you know, um, what we can do to help. Did you have any questions about how to pay online? Um, just let us know. And by starting the conversation that way of here, I'm here to help you, we found that tenants will open up so much more. They'll say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to pay or wait, I had the wrong bank account or I just lost my job, whatever it is, but it helps you understand based on that there's um, the mediators basically have multiple different steps they can follow. And based on the response, what is the next best step for the landlord and the tenant? And one of those is actually looking for rental assistance programs. Mm -hmm. Because there is a lot out there that will pay, they're not going to foot the tenant's bill for an indefinite period of time, but they want to keep people housed. Those mm -hmm. are both government programs, as well as there's a lot of church groups and nonprofits that will do that and they'll do one time. And the tenant actually needs some sort of notice that they're laid on rent and that the, the landlord is taking action in order for one of those nonprofits to come in. Right. And so that gives the landlord 30 days to find something mutually beneficial, which is one, let's get your rent paid up to date now. So I don't have to use the security deposit for it. Because if you use the security deposit, when the tenant moves out, you're going to have to foot a huge bill to do the turnover repairs. Um, so that's the first one. And then the second one um, benefit of it is then you do have another 25 days, whatever it is, 20 days to say, okay, what are the other options? And it may be an early termination of the lease. This tenant doesn't, if they don't have any money, it, having a termination fee and charging them for it and taking them to court is gonna cost you a lot more. Let's figure out some way to get them into another home with friends, family, you know, um, another place that's more affordable for them. But you basically have 20 days to do that. And when you tell a tenant you're working with them on it and you have a very specific plan, we found it's much better for both parties. And so those are the types of um, steps that we take. There's also in, in some, some cases, uh, rare, but we do pay, have them go through payment plans. And so that would really be assessing and understanding their financial situation um, and what is going to be the best outcome. And so the rent defense program is, it, it really starts with mediation. That's what we're known for. And our mediators are known for, but then um, it also goes to saying, okay, we do serve notices. If the tenant is not going to work with you and doesn't agree to things in writing and, you know, is, uh, is not telling the full truth of what is actually going on or not abiding by their end of the deal, then what we're going to have to do is go ahead and, and go straight to, towards a no notice and a court filing, which definitely does happen. Um, but you're trying to mitigate that and start with, hey, I'm here to help and see what's going on. So that's what our rent defense does. And that's how we actually get all of this data is we're really focused on looking at who's opted into rent defense and taking those proactive measures on the landlord side to make sure on the tenant side, we understand what's happening and how cost burdened they are. Because as a landlord and an investor, the affordability gap should worry you. Um, you should be worried about that because these are your customers. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want your customers to be cost burdened at all. And so these are important stats and, um, and metrics that we track um, every single month. I love it. Again, folks, uh, Hemlane offers a, uh, a pilot or free trial, excuse me, free trial also has a free version. Dana, where can they go get these things? Yeah, you can go to hemlane.com. So it's H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com. You can see our features at the top. So you can go um, deep on the um, evictions, the delinquency tab there. And then um, just mention one rental at a time because you do get 20% off that first year, which is the highest discount that we give. Nice. I love it. Dana, you're amazing. Thank, thank the team. Thank the data scientists for pulling that together. Really crazy. Georgia. South Carolina, Alabama, Vermont, and Hawaii. That I, I It would have taken me a while to get to that list. So thank them for me. Thanks so much, Michael. Take care.